1 Samuel chapter 15, 16, and we're going to just continue on in the Word of God, but I want you to just turn to chapter, uh, 1 Samuel 15 and verse 11 first. That's where I'm going to start. Today I want to preach on a man that a lot of us will resemble and recognize ourselves in. And that man is called David. Amen. I want to talk about David as a young man because we have a lot of youth that have strayed from God. David was a young man that loved the Lord. Yeah, right. amen. The Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. He was the apple of God's <laughs> eye. So David is a good example for all of us, whether young or old. We see in David a lot of things that God wants to see in us. Yeah, right. And that is someone who will praise the Lord. Yes. David knew how to play skillfully upon a harp to the point that it would drive the very demons away from Saul that he could get a little peace in his mind and in his heart. Young people, amen, need to remember that they're going to grow old one day. Yeah. And life can be wasted on nonsense. Yes. It's best, amen, to know the Lord when you're young and begin to do the things that God has put in your life, amen, and developed in your life and put those things in action in the world. The Bible says that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. No one should be exempt from hearing the word of God. Amen. No matter what their affiliation is with other religions, they still need God's word. Amen. God's word is forever settled in heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. God's word shall never pass away. God's word is what we depend on totally. It's the thing that gives us faith each day that we live. It's the thing that carries us through the bad times as well as the good times. Sometimes you just need to get up and having a bad day and just read Psalms. Sometimes when you want to get some action, amen, on a problem that you have, just wake up and read Proverbs, amen? A lot of wisdom in there. But the Bible says here, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. This is God speaking to the prophet Samuel. And he said, It repenteth me that I ever had Saul become king. I believe Saul was picked not just by God, but also by the people. See, the people of Israel saw the foreign nations and they said, you know what? They've got a king over them and I'd like to have a king over us. And they went to God and said, look, we want a king of our own like these other heathen nations have. And God said, I want to be your king. And they said, no, we want a king. And see, when mankind wants something that God doesn't want, He'll give you what you want, but you won't always want what you get. Amen. 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 So he had Saul, and Saul was a head taller than anyone else, tall, dark, and handsome. And the people looked at that and said, this has got to be the man. This has got to be the one that is used as king. He's a head taller than anybody else. So they found Saul amongst the stuff hid there. Amongst the stuff. Yep. Yep. A lot of people are hiding amongst the stuff today. Uh -huh. Hiding from God. Some have a form of religion but deny the power thereof. Some act like they're committed and saved and have no commitment at all to God. Yeah. Or they come to church every once in a while. They call themselves Christians, but they're like Saul. They no longer obey the commandments of God. Uh -huh. Well, all I need to do is just go to church. All I need to do, amen, is put a little offering in the offering plate, and God will understand. No, God said at the end, and Jesus speaking said, one day they will come to me and they will say, didn't we prophesy? Uh -huh. Didn't we cast out devils? Didn't we do many mighty works? And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Uh -huh. I never knew you. Yeah. Well, Jesus don't lie. If he said, I never knew you, that's exactly what he meant. I never knew you. Your name is not 
in the Lamb's book of life. Your books, which God says the books were open, there's a book on you. There's a book on me. Our life, amen, is being put down in a book. And if we're not being obedient to God, the Bible said that He will blot out our name from the book of life. Yes, yeah. that's right. Well, it had to be in there to get blotted out. Right. Amen? Yeah. Because it's not God's will that any perish, but that all come to the knowledge of salvation mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ our Lord. God said, if anyone comes to me, I would in no wise cast him out. So the problem's not with God. The problem's with us. Amen. The problem's with us. The problem wasn't with God that Saul wasn't obedient. The problem was with Saul. Saul wanted to do things his own way. Yeah. When he was told to destroy a nation, and destroy everything in it, he brought back the best stuff. Yeah. Remember where he hid? Well, he said, I brought it back so I could sacrifice it to God. That's not what God told you to do. You know, a lot of times we get our own ideals of what we want to do and forget about what God told us to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So if God told you to be here today, that's where you should be. Yeah. If you jump up and testify about God sent you here, that's where you should be, right here. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be looking for another place. You shouldn't be wandering. You shouldn't be doing anything except what God has called you to do. Because each and every one of us is fitly joined in the body of believers. Amen. We all have a particular purpose in that body. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Amen. If you look at chapter 16, it says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill the horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. I have provided me a king among his sons. Yeah, uh -huh. Then the seventh verse, the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, uh -huh. or on the height of his stature, Come on. because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. Yeah. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. Amen. Amen. See, the outward appearance is what you want people to see. Come on. But the inward is what God sees. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God looks at the very intent of your heart. Uh -huh. God looks at what you're really doing and the motivation that you have for doing what you're doing. Sometimes we think we, we're smarter than God. We're, we can hide from God our motivation, but God knows your motivation. He looks at the very intents of your heart. Mm -hmm. David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, hallelujah. David loved God. Yes, he did. Amen. 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 He said, Neither have I chosen this. Amen. When Samuel would bring to Jesse, Jesse's children before the sons. God would refuse and say, I don't want that one, but he's tall. I don't want him, but he's masculine. I don't want him. I don't want him. <coughs> well, who do you want? Don't look like we've got anybody here left. Amen. And the Bible says, as Samuel told him, don't you have any other sons than what we see here? And he said, well, we got one more, one more. a little ready boy yeah. that's keeping the sheep. <laughs> amen. Got that little fella. He's out there keeping the sheep. He's ready. Amen. Which might mean that he had red hair and freckles. Wasn't a big guy. Just little old David. Amen. But David was a man, amen, after God's own heart. Yeah. See, it doesn't make no difference how you look. Doesn't make no difference how big you are. Doesn't make no difference about any of those things. What makes a difference is God's power in you. Yeah. Amen. 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 God's ability and His gifts that He has given you through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died for you. Amen. Amen. So God, none of those boys will work. Got to have one other one. Yeah, God David. And when David showed up, 
the prophet anointed him. Anointed him right there as king of Israel. Now he didn't become king right that second. He didn't become king right then. But he had the anointing upon him. Amen. Then the battle was taking place when Goliath came out and he was taunting Israel and the military might of Israel. And he told them, said, you know what? Send your best man out. Whoever you've got you think is the best man, send him on out here and I will destroy him. Yeah. Now David was sent to his brothers to bring them some lunch and he got to looking and seeing the uncircumcised Philistine, Goliath, taunting Israel. And David said, what is this? Why is he allowed to do this? And one of his older brothers, his oldest brother, said, David, who's taking care of those few sheep that our father put you in charge of? What did you do? Come up here and see the fight? And he was upset at David because David was talking to the men and he was telling the men, we ought not let this uncircumcised Philistine talk to us. Because mm -hmm. God's on our side. Yeah. And if God's for you, it don't make any difference who is against you. God is for you. Amen. <laughs> so the king, men overheard what was going on, what was being said. And the king called David in and said, uh, what is this? You think you can beat the giant? And David said, no, but God can. And David said, you know, I was taking care of those sheep my dad put me in charge of. And a lion came and a bear came and I killed them. I took the little lamb out of their mouth. I slayed them. I took one by the beard and I killed him. Amen. He said, and this giant will be just like the bear and just like the lion. I will slay him, not with my own might, because it's not with your power, not with your might, but it's with the power of God. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord that was upon you and upon you and in you. Remember, David was anointed by the anointing Amen. all to be the, the king of Israel. Amen. And king yell. Saul said, you think you can do this, boy? He said, I believe I can. He said, well, here, with my armor. Put it up. And David put that armor on and said, man, this don't fit me. It's hanging all over me. I can't fight him with this. This is going to be a hindrance, not a help. Amen. Sometimes, see, we're going out trying to fight the battle with somebody else's armor. Yes. Uh -huh. You can't fight the battle with my armor. Right. I can't fight the battle with your armor. That's why the Bible says take the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our arms girded about with truth. Amen. amen. Can somebody say amen? Our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of the living God that's able to find. Amen. The bread from the bone, the bone from the marrow. God's word, amen, is what we need to yeah. face the giants that we have in our life. Amen. They was like, I can't wear that. It don't fit me. He said, I killed that lion and I killed that bear with slaying. And I hope you appreciate this because I took a whole lot of time building this thing. Slaying five stones. I've been to Israel. Let me tell you, man. I seen them boys throw them rocks. You'll hear just like this. Then all of a sudden, that rock will be slung and man, it hits the mark. They are good. And a rock can kill you. Now David went down to the brook. And the Bible said he chose five smooth stones. Why do you think the writer wrote that? Five smooth stones. Amen? There was a reason, there's a purpose. He handpicked Five smooth stones. For one reason, he wanted them to be aerodynamic. He wanted 
them to be able to sail through the air and split the air and hit the mark <coughs> that he was aiming for. Another thing that some people believe is that Goliath had four brothers, which is not true. Goliath had two brothers. But Goliath did have four sons. Amen. So he might have got it and said, well, I'm going to get the daddy and the boys might get mad, so I'll get one for them too. Because <laughs> they were giants also. See, there's a lot of giants in the land. You have giants in your life. I have giants in my life. We all have to face the giants. And we're all going to have to know our place in the Lord. We're all going to have to hand pick our weapon. We're all going to have to do what God has told us to do, not what someone else has encouraged us to do. You know, people are always seemingly led astray because they hear somebody else who says they're Christian. Come on. Everybody that says they're a Christian, not a Christian. Come on. Amen. Everybody that says that they love you don't really love you. See, there's a lot of people that say a lot of things and they don't mean nothing to say. A lot of times people are used of the enemy. And you sometimes if you don't have your exercises discerned to know good and evil, you're not going to know that. Because they're going to be slick. Even the devil, the Bible says, comes sometimes as an angel of light. Amen. Amen. An angel of light. Wow, that's an angel. It's a bright angel. That's got to be an angel from God. No, not necessarily. Amen. Not necessarily. The devil is cunning. He is crafty. He is deceiving. Amen. And he deceives everyone that has an itching ear to hear a fable or a wise tale that may sound a little better than what God has declared. Amen. 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 <clears throat> yes, sir, you can find a church. You can find a church that will allow you to smoke, drink, cuss, commit fornication, adultery, whatever. They're out there. Churches are out there. If you're a homosexual, you can find a homosexual pastor that's willing to pastor homosexual people. They're out there. But is that going to get you to heaven? No. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Everything that I mentioned may be a giant in your life that needs to be slain by the word of the living God. See, if you get the word in you, you get the devil out of you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some of you think I'm wrong. I was in the office earlier. Uh, before church started, a friend of mine, I believe it was his church, a woman was up there, and she was just getting with it. And I just turned it on, and she said, some of your mothers need to punch your child in the face. I said, wow, I thought I was tough. <laughs> yeah, punch him in the face. Now, that's probably inappropriate. Amen? But, but people out there, you know, they say a lot of things. Amen? You can't go everything that somebody says. Luckily, no parent turned around and popped somebody in the face. But, you know, we hear a lot of things and, and, and we really don't understand a lot of things because we don't put the time in to understand. See, wisdom and understanding comes from the Lord. He gives you the revelation. David had a revelation. Why? Because David was a man of prayer and a man of praise. Yes. Amen. When David brought the ark back to Israel, the Bible says uh, that David was so happy, amen, uh, that he danced before the Lord with all his might. Yeah. All his might, amen. Some of you, you get all caught up and say, I don't believe that's God, that boy dancing there. Why, well, what's he doing? That's not what you should do in church. David didn't say that David danced before the Lord with all of God's might. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. It was a form of praising God that he danced. Amen. When you get in that frame of mind and spirit uh, and you want to praise God, let me assure you, somebody, somewhere, amen, is going to criticize you for praising God. I felt like raising my hands today. I felt like shouting today. I felt like running today. But I didn't do it because I was afraid that 
somebody would say something. David said to his wife, amen, said, you acted ridiculous today down there dancing, amen, with the ephod on, your girdle, and everybody seen you, even the handmaidens, and that's ridiculous. David said, you think that was bad today? Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> You think I shouted today, wait till next Sunday. Watch me shout. See, we come to church and we allow the enemy to just suppress our praise. David wouldn't do that. David played and he sung and, and he talked to God and he communicated, amen, and God talked with David. Amen. Amen. You know the story. He went out to that uncircumcised Philistine. And that uncircumcised Philistine thought that David was no match for him. But when David started pulling that little smooth stone out of his pouch and put it in that sling, that old giant said, what is wrong with you? You come out here to face me with a staff and with a slingshot Man, I'm going to tear you up. And David started running towards him. Hello. You know what we do? <laughs> we start running away from them, amen. No, we don't run away from them. We run toward them. You won't slay the giant unless you move forward. Amen. Did you notice when I talked about the armor of God? I didn't say you had a shield for your buttocks. Amen. Or your back. There is nothing there. Why? Because a good soldier, amen, marches forward upon the enemy and he does not retreat. Hallelujah. He goes to accomplish what God said he for. And the Bible says, be a good soldier, amen, unto the Lord. Amen. We need Lord, to be good Lord. soldiers. Oh, every time some little thing flares up, that little giant jumps up, amen, and we see him so tall and so mighty. <coughs> what did the spies say? Huh? Ten of them came back. <coughs> There's giants out there. Giants out there. There's walled cities out there. They'll, 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 they'll kill us. And two of them said, I'm not really caring about what's out there. They got some pomegranates and some graves like you ain't never seen before. And if God said we can take it, we are well able to take it. Can somebody say that? Now those ten spies died and those two Joshua and Caleb lived. Amen. I want to tell you something. God is looking for somebody who's going to say yes to his will. Somebody who's not going to get offended every time somebody says something. Amen. We got some giants uh, that's right in church. Yeah, come on. Giant mouths. <laughs> Giant mouths. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we don't want to defeat them. <laughs> Somebody comes up and says, you know, brother so-and-so, you know, he, he, he's got this problem in his life. You know what you should say to that person? Shut up. <laughs> We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. That is gossip. Mm -hmm. And we don't listen to that. That's right. Instead of rebuking them, what you do? That's the old phone. You young folks don't know about it. Young folks don't know nothing about this. Got that quarter in there too. <laughs> Hello, did you hear? Huh? No, we repeat it. And every time it's repeated, there's something added to it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because we want to tell our own story, and then when we first heard it, it wasn't juicy enough. Come on. Yeah. David's oldest brother said, What's wrong with you, boy? Daddy left you taking care of them few sheep. Why? Who would you leave them sheep with? You come up here to spy on us and watch the battle? They want no battle. They were scared. Hiding. David wanted to know why are you hiding with the giants out there and he's trying to provoke us to battle. So David 
said, I'll go if nobody else is willing. And he took that little sling and that smooth rock, and when he let that thing go, it hit that giant right between his eyes. That's what some of you need to do. Hit the giant between his eyes. Amen? Amen. Knock him flat to his back. And then what did David do? He took Goliath's own sword. Amen? And beheaded him. And showed it to all Israel. This is what the giant should look like. I don't know, we had a saying in Vietnam, kill the head and the body dies. Yes. This is what it should look like right here. A headless body, amen, that can't do anything to hurt or harm you anymore. Now David's done one to King's daughter. <coughs> She's the one who got upset because he danced. So David, amen, didn't have the best wife. Amen? Amen. amen. But he had a wife. David, in battle, the Bible says, the women came out and said, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain tens of thousands. Saul got a little mad. Several times Saul tried to kill David, but David had opportunity after opportunity to kill Saul, and he never would. He said, I will not touch God's anointed. Amen. This man was anointed by God to be king, and I won't touch him. Even though I'm anointed now to take his place, I'll let God deal with him. Sometimes you need to keep your hand off God's man, amen, and keep your mouth off him. Can somebody say amen? amen. You don't have to say everything you think. Come on. Come on. <laughs> huh? Amen. Right. So now David is rising through the ranks. Now, he's getting ready to take over. We know that Saul, his son, Jonathan, they were slain in battle. David took over as king. Amen? Now, David's king. Why I'm talking about this story is to let you know David's like us. David wasn't a perfect man, but he was a man after God's own heart. He was the apple of God's eye, even though he had many imperfections in his life. So David, one day on the rooftop when he should have been in battle, looked over and seen Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Now you might believe that was the first time that ever happened. And I don't know because the Bible didn't tell us. But I think he might have took a few sneak peeks before. Amen? Because it normally doesn't overtake and get you all at once. See, somebody first asks you, do you want to drag Huh? Take your little puff. Huh? Is that how most of you start smoking? Huh? Most of you start smoking dope. Somebody took go ahead and taste. <coughs> and breathe in real deep. Get the munchies. That's how you started. Nobody came up to you and gave you a needle full of cocaine and said, here. Huh? Or draw a line over the mirror and said, snorting? Didn't happen that way. It was a gradual thing. See, the devil, he is like a roaring lion, but the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's those little things that get you. See, David got up there and he looked and there was the woman bathing a man. She was purifying herself and David said, man, she's looking good today. Go and call her. He said, that's Uriah's wife. He said, I don't care. Uriah's off in the battle. He's fighting for Israel. He's not here right now. So he got her and she came up. He committed adultery. And she said to David, said, David, that act of adultery, you know, had a repercussion. David said, what? He said, I'm pregnant. What? So he said for Uriah, Uriah, come on back out of the battle. And he said, Uriah, why don't you go on home, wash your feet, get cleaned up, and go into your wife. Next day, David got up, and there's Uriah, laying at his door. See, sin crouched.
just at your door, the Bible Amen. says. And it seeks to overtake you. Uh, and it seeks to confront you. Uh, and take you into its grasp. Uriah was right there reminding David. You sinned, boy. Mm -hmm. Now David, being a godly man as he was, wrote a letter. Joab, this is David, put Uriah mm -hmm. in the heat of the battle and then retreat from him so that he'll be killed <coughs> in the battle. You know whose hand he sent it by? Uriah. He put the death notice in Uriah's hand to take to Joab. And exactly that happened. Amen? Exactly that happened. It happened and Uriah died and David married Uriah's wife and his son that Bathsheba had it died and David had another son called Solomon by her and he eventually reigned and ruled over Israel. But the thing is, God told David, amen, through a prophet named Nathan, he said there was a man that was a rich man, he had flocks and herds of sheep, but there was another man that only had one little lamb and that rich man stole that man's little lamb, amen, David said, hold on here just a moment. I'll kill him for that. <laughs> Boy, don't tell me no more. I'll get that rascal. He's dead. Come on. And Nathan pointed his finger at David's face and said, Thou art the man. See, you have problems with me sometimes because I'm like Nathan, amen. Sometimes i got to point my bony little finger in your face and tell you you're the one, amen, that's making the, the problem bigger than what it should be. You're the one causing the problem. You're the one that's in sin and need to get right. You're the one, amen, that needs to start listening and not coming to church and sleeping. Amen. I don't come to your bedroom and I don't preach in that and you shouldn't come to this church and sleep in here. I'm like that woman. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah. I won't do it, though. Yeah. Amen. So, Nathan told David, said, David, that's a grievous sin you committed. And you know God gave you wives. And He gave you Saul's wives. And He would have gave you even more wives. But you took that man's wife. That man that was out there fighting for you. That man that was out there in obedience to your word and your battle plans. You took his wife. God said, I'm going to forgive you. See, some of you think forgiveness means that nothing else is going to happen. No, Nathan said, I'm going to forgive you, but the sword will never depart from your house. Amen. Now, Tamar was David's daughter, a very beautiful young lady, and Abnon had the hots for her. And Abnon said, I'm going to take that girl. And one day she come in to tend to him because he was pretending like he was sick. And he raped her. Well, she had an older brother. His name was Absalom. These are all of David's kids. Absalom was her whole brother. Abnon was her half-brother. Absalom said, I'm going to get a plan together. Sheep shearing time. I'm going to take that boy up there with us. Get him drunk. Then kill him. So I'm going to do kill him. He raped my sister. That's exactly what he did. Took him up there. Got him drunk. Killed him. The sword, David, will never depart from your house. Then Absalom wanted to take over the kingdom. And the Bible says that Absalom was running and his hair got caught 
caught in a tree. And he died. One man preached a sermon, Sister Kim, the day God killed the hippie. <laughs> Amen. That was for the 60s sermons. Absalom was a, was a man, he, he was cool. He had so much hair that they weighed it. Yeah, actually weighed his hair. I mean, he was a good looking man. He was smart too. He'd go out by the gates of the city and he would tell them, say, you know what, David's too busy, but I'll take care of him, no problem. He was a politician. Anybody know any politicians? Well, he was a good one. Baby, I'll take care of all your problems. And he was going to rise to be king, but it didn't happen that way. See, the sword never departed David's house. And it goes on to say how that David, in his old age, laying in bed, couldn't even get warm, that bring a virgin to just heat him up in the night so he could stay warm. That's in your Bible. See, some of you don't read the Bible. You want to go out and read all kinds of other stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff in the Bible. Amen. You need to read. It's got your war stories. It's got your love stories. It's got all kinds of stories in there that will intrigue you. But see, some of you are too ignorant. You want to go to the world. Amen. Harry Potter and this and that and some other old craziness that will get you in big trouble. See, David, he lived for God. He messed up. God fixed him up. It cost him heavily. Just like us. But if we remember, as David did, David knew how to praise the Lord. Amen. David knew how to worship God. David knew how to pray. And every time David got himself in trouble, he knew how to build that altar and cry out to God. I'm here to tell you if you ain't heard nothing else. I wanted to tell you about David the boy. David the anointed. David the husband. David the king. And David the failure. But David was a finisher. He finished his race and still loved God with all of his heart and God still loved David. Amen. That's where you ought to want to wind up to be in the hands and the heart of God, in love with God, and God in love with you. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to shock some of you, but the Bible says God hates hello, sin. You didn't know it was in there, did you? God hates sin. liars. Oh, you didn't know that was in there. Yeah, little ones, big ones, white ones, black ones. All liars shall have their place in the lake of fire. Why does God hate liars? Because truth is the only thing that makes you free. That's right. You live a lie, you live a deceptive life. David, when Nathan pointed his finger in his face, and David realized he was the man, David repented. See, when we realize we're the one God's talking to, we ought to repent. And we all say, Lord, that's me. And I stand in the need of prayer. I stand in the need of reconciliation. And the only way I can get that is by repentance and by acknowledging that Jesus paid the price for my sin. Amen. Would you stand to you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.